and welcome to Jason Waller Unleashed. Real talk, real success. I'm host Jason Waller, former billion dollar business entrepreneur, elite business coach, two-time top five podcast host with the BAM podcast and the True Underdog. You might know me from my TED Talks, best-selling books, or even my brand new reality TV show on Amazon, BAM Fam. Are you hungry for inspiration, wisdom, perhaps a hearty laugh? Get ready for a dynamic, electrifying journey filled with towering business triumphs, intimate family moments, and raw honesty that you won't find anywhere else. Buckle up. This is about to get dope as hell. I'm telling you, I have had all kinds of guests on my previous shows, and we're going to have some bomb guests on this. We're going to be talking about everything from politics to money to business to family to drama to kids to you. You name it, we're going to talk about it. It's going to be real. It's going to be raw. It's going to be in your face. It is Jason Waller Unleashed. Real talk, real success coming now. Bam! Welcome to Jason Waller Unleashed, and I am super excited. We have been climbing the charts for top 30 in society and culture. We are top 25 on entrepreneurship and business. We talk about money. We talk about making billions, losing billions, family drama, cancer, freaking aliens, politics, relationships. I mean, I am bipolar as shit, and I share all the stories, but guess what? My family is bipolar as shit with the Bam Fam coming out here soon in January on Amazon Prime, and I have got my second oldest daughter, my first college child, right? Right. That's in Bama right now, and we are enemies because she goes to the University of Alabama. We're going to talk to her in a second, and Alabama is my second favorite team because she goes there, but I am Go Blue, and University of Michigan is my team. However, now they're colliding in a game coming up soon. What does that mean? That means now McKenzie is my enemy until after that game. McKenzie, welcome to the show, babe. Thank you. Aren't you fucking excited? I'm so excited. You're so excited. I'm so excited. You don't seem so excited. I am. It's been a how long since you've been on my show? Two years? Three years. Holy shit. Probably, maybe four. And, and then when you were on my show, you actually created a podcast. I did. What was that one called? Talking with a narcissist. And who's the narcissist in your podcast? Me. Who? It was me. Say it louder. It was me. You're a narcissist. I don't claim that, but yeah. You are a narcissist. Sure. Is there different versions of narcissists? I feel like, yeah. What are the versions that you know of? Because I know what I'm always called. What are the versions you've heard of? I don't know the names, but like I feel like I'm just not as narcissistic as you. So you think I'm, like, I'm the king narcissist? Yeah. I feel like wow. it was you... Hannah, me. I don't know. Me and your mom were talking recently. We think you might have passed me. You might have the belt. How? You might be the champ. I don't do anything. Hannah's over here posting thirst traps every day, every single day. What's a thirst trap? It's like boobs and and shit. Yeah. Oh. Like someone should hit it with a frying pan. Yeah. Okay. And then you're just you. So I feel like I'm. Hold on. No, 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 no. I'm third. What the hell does that mean? You're just you. I mean, you just like post. A lot about, like, you love you. Do you not love you? I love me, but you love you in, like, a concerning, maybe we should, like, bring it down a little bit way. But I'm kind of just, like, it's a healthy way. Okay, why is yours different than mine? Because I see you posting shit all the time where you're laughing and giddy and but you're bragging. I don't think, like, I don't sit on the couch and, you know, whip out videos of myself for the whole family to watch. You do that, right? So, uh. like, if we're having, you know, a conversation, all of a sudden... You are on the TV and you're just admired by yourself. You're so like, I admire wow, myself. This guy's so much like he's just beautiful. He is beautiful. I am beautiful. Yeah, Do you, you think you're beautiful? Are mesmerized by yourself on the TV. Are you not mesmerized by yourself? I love myself, but not on the level that you do. That's what I'm saying. You're number one, Hannah's number two, I'm number three. Mm. Mm-hmm. Where does Kinsey in London I'm sorry, where does London and Christian and your mom rank? Okay, so I think it's you, Hannah, me, and then I think it's Christian, mom, London. London's the least narcissist. Yeah. Wow, she's going to love you for that. I know. If she gets to hear this, she'll be like, Kinsey's my new favorite. I know. I think London's turning into a narcissist, so I would disagree. Slowly, but right now, I think Christian and mom have her. So I'm a peacock narcissist, one that likes to brag about their own shit, love myself. I think you're the same. Nana. I don't think so. Oh, dude, you really don't like me. I guess you don't like to brag about it. What, what, how are you a narcissist then? Just because you think you're the shit? Yeah. 
Okay, so you, your thoughts make you a narcissist because you think you're better than everybody else. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Yeah. But I admire myself so much that I'm worse than you. Yeah. Because I take it to another level of, of really vomiting and projectile and saying, watch my shit now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like when anybody brings you up, you're like, this is my favorite topic. Let's chat. Like, that's your favorite thing. My if favorite you topic's me. get to your heart, talk about you. That's wow. genuinely how it is. I don't have to talk about me to feel You understand right. this is my show. You're I supposed am, to be nice to me on my show. I am being nice. Okay. But I'm being honest, Just checking. too. Like, this is okay. honesty. That's hard for you to hear. No, nothing's hard but, for me to hear. I've got thick skin. I don't get emotional. Mm-hmm. I do get emotional. Mm-hmm. I've been emotional lately. Yeah, for sure. Kind of like a baby. Yeah. But listen, I have a question. Would you rather be insecure <clears throat> and hate yourself? No. Or would you rather be a narcissist and love the fuck out of yourself? I'd be a narcissist. Right, because why? Insecure people hurt other people. There's no reason for it. And how do they do that? They are like, internet trolls are like the perfect example of insecure people. Internet trolls. Hurt people, hurt people. And that's what they do. Usually I believe that somebody that projectiles negativity on somebody feels that way about themselves. Yeah. That's sad. They can't see straight. And they just hate on other people. Mm -hmm. Why is the world so full of these kind of people? Probably, I mean, at least for like girls, it's like you have to have like this picture perfect, like. The Kardashian style or like you have to be like this like certain thing. But the Kardashian started ugly as hell. Yeah, but people don't look at it like that. They look at it like, oh my God, I did not wake up with my hair straightened today. And oh my God, I have a pimple and I'm so ugly. Which leads into insecurity. I think you're right. I also think that the world is lazy. Most mm-hmm. people are lazy. They're scared to go out and get and earn and, and grind and do the things yeah. necessary to better themselves, take care of themselves, you know, be in a better position. And therefore they hate on those that do it yeah, because their lack of doing it yeah. and they don't appreciate and admire those that do it. They, 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 they feel that they're insecure, that their failure is because of their success mm-hmm. and it's not fair. And they, exactly. And they try to find ways to tear it down mm-hmm. and it's real bad for women. Especially around your age. Yeah. Give me some examples. I mean, prime example is like, you know, I have a show coming out with my family. This isn't me thinking, oh, I'm above you. Like, you don't have a show out like I do. No, it's just I was given opportunities in my life that other people weren't. And I'm grateful for it. I'm not rubbing it in your face. I'm not like, oh, like, watch my show. Like, you have to watch my show. I think a lot of people are so mad about that because they're not in the same place as me that at this point I know it's not my fault. I can't say or do anything to change how people feel about it. So I just go on about my day. Like if you want to sit there and you want to be mad at me and hate me and talk about me and stalk me because of this, you're wasting your own time. Like I don't even notice it. Like you are spending quality time on my stuff. Your rent there you are getting free rent in their mind. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. People gotta pay me to get rent in my mind. Yeah. Like, like it's just it's not yeah, I, I charge for coaching. Like you you wanna be in my mind unless I love you. The only way you get in my fucking mind is you pay me. Yeah. You can say whatever you want, but you ain't in my mind. Yeah. You're not getting free rent in my mind. Yeah. But these people are weak. I agree. People don't realize I get asked all the time, how the hell did you guys get a show? And they think like I submitted and said, let's get a show. And that's not how that went down. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we talked originally to the directors out in California about the bar rehab show. And then we talked about putting a show kind of like that, you know, and then it changed to the the family of the BAM fam. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but you're right. It is an opportunity. A lot of people don't get. And when we, when I told you guys we were going to do it, half the family was on board and half was not. Yeah. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. Share with everyone the half that was not. The half that was not was London, Mom. And Christian. Really? Oh, he can't stand it. Christian can't stand it now. But coming out, he did want it. He doesn't want it now. Yeah. Well, now things have shifted, but he didn't, or he did want it at the beginning. Yeah. So it was only really London and Mom who didn't want it. But now Mom's okay with it. Yeah. Christian's not. Yeah. London's kind of okay with it. 
I think it's also with Christian, like, people feed their kids how they feel, and so the kids act out on how their parents feel, and that kind of makes Christian unhappy about it, because it's like, he's like, I can't control it, and... And he, he's gotten bullied. Yeah. And he's ready to fight people. I mean, he's a fighter, but he just doesn't want to get in trouble. It's just... It's so stupid. Like, you guys are, like, 13. Like, go play football or something. Like, the, you, why... Why? Well, what's sad is these parents sit at home and usually in the Lake Norman, North Carolina area, it's mm-hmm. wannabes. Yep. It's not real money. It's wannabe money. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these people, and I'm talking to you in the Lake Norman area, fucking North Carolina, I am talking to you and you follow my shit. And if you're good people, then this won't offend you. But if you're a fucking poser, if you're a loser, if you're a fucking hater, if you're an internet troll and you troll our shit and you comment or you don't comment, but you don't like because you're a fucking troll, it's because you're weak and you're insecure and you'll never be us. You hate us because you ain't us, which is sad. My Motherfucker, we got no hate for you. We have no hate for people like that. Yeah. But then you poison your children to run their mouth and say things to the kids. And really, it's going to get your kids' asses kicked. Because eventually, people get enough and they fucking wall up somebody. Mm-hmm. Right? London beat the shit out of somebody. Christian beat up two eighth graders last year. Like, it's inappropriate. I would never tell you kids, I don't like that family. I don't let those people. I would never do that for yeah. you to go judge another child. Mm-hmm. So that's just weak-ass parenting. That's just weak-ass people in this area. It's because this area is full of wannabes. That's what that's what it is. It's not even real money. It's it's a fabrication of money. Oh, I know. And I'm not saying everybody. I'm saying most of you are fucking frauds. You're haters. You're complainers. You you're internet trolls. It's sad. Yeah. I mean, I don't waste my time seeing who's following me, but I'm told, you know, oh shit, or who's trolling, and it's like, dude, that person fucking hates me, but they're watching everything I do, and half my followers fucking hate me. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. It doesn't bother me when they talk shit. Does it bother you still when people talk shit online? Um, I think about me, no. But I think about my family, yeah. I think it bugs me. Because I'm like, you don't know them. like, Or it's people who have grown up with me and have seen my family. And then all of a sudden, now that everyone's shifted, they jump on the bandwagon. And it's like, I could say so much about your family as well, but I don't. I know. Like, Like, where's the respect back? Like, I could go low just as you are, but I just walk away from it. You know, the old me goes low all the time. You know, we have a rule in our family. You know, we we take up for each other. You burn our grass, we blow your fucking house up, right? It's kind of the deal. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to keep my composure a little bit of not losing my shit on certain people. You know, a flexing and putting them in their place, you know. And there's a few times in life I've had to say some shit that... I've had to put people on their, on their shit. And I, you know, I, I hate that because then I have to belittle them and give them a taste of their own medicine and put them in reality of motherfucker. Before you come at me, you better look in the mirror. Yeah. But you know, you're the bad <clears> guy after you do that. I understand. And look, Which is crazy. I'm a great villain. I don't want to be a villain. Cause I think I'm a really good person. I mean, you get, I mean, I'm a good person with yeah. a big heart, but I can handle being a villain yeah. because I have very, very strong shoulders and thick skin. What bothers me is seeing you guys bothered. Yeah. Right. It doesn't bother me if they say anything about me. That fat motherfucker, this guy, this guy, all the things they want to say. I don't give a shit. Just keep talking. Again, you're giving me free rent in your mind. I'm winning because you ain't got no rent in my mother. You got to pay for my mind. Yeah. But it bothers me when they hurt your guys' feelings. I think it's more of just like we know a lot of people don't like our family for God knows what. I mean, I none of them will ever say why they hate us ever. It's just insults after insults. But I think sometimes when people come after character is when it upsets us. You can say, you know, oh, money, this, you know. Daddy's oh, money, yeah, all the shit you like guys have to that, deal with. Like, whatever. I don't care. But when you come after somebody's character, that's when it's a problem. Because I know everyone's character. And that's not what, like, that's a lie. Yeah. Like, people will say, you know, you're a terrible person. You're a fraud, all this. And it's like. But you're not, though. Like, you have not sat in a room with him long enough to judge someone's character. I mean, you've probably never even met him. Yeah. So I think that's where me and Hannah mostly get very agitated and upset because it's like, don't say that about someone you've never even been in the same room with. How would you know that? Because other people are saying that? How would they know that? Because other people are saying that? Yeah. It's a cycle. It's a game of telephone. Yeah, it's just exhausting. Happens all the time. Does it happen in college? Mm-hmm. Same shit. Yeah. Lots of drama and chitter chatter. Oh my God, yeah. So, do you ever miss being in your sorority? 
Um, not really, no. I think freshman year was a really great time to experience that and to meet people and and do that lifestyle, but I don't really miss it at all. I think it was, at least for me, not speaking for everybody, but it was very toxic and negative for me, and it wasn't really the place I wanted to be in after the year I've had. Right, and you had a rough year. Yeah, like I was just like, this is... This is not like, you know, sisterhood, as they say. This is not looking out for each other. This is not, you know, somewhere you can go when you feel sad or unsafe. This is a place that's going to cause you to feel unsafe. It's going to make you want to rip your hair out. It's negative. It's just, it was not close-knit. I mean, it was friend group after friend group of just, like, them talking bad about other people, other sororities. And, like, I was just like, this is... This is exhausting, so I dropped. It's been a shitty year. It's been a bad year, yeah, for sure. I'm hoping 2024 is better. Literally, I'm on my knees pleading that it's going to be better. I can't do it anymore. I'm so excited. So I know in the BAM fam, we talk about your traumatic issue with fentanyl. Mm -hmm. And I know all the time you're reminded of fentanyl. Mm -hmm. And I know that out of all my kids, you were the most free-spirited. Yeah. With the least amount of anxiety. Yeah. Like... Your mom has so much anxiety. I got. I feel bad for it. It's, it's hard. She lives with so much anxiety. And a lot of it's from trauma from her dad and trauma from her mom, trauma from me and life and everything, right? So she has so much anxiety and it's hard. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think Christian was born with anxiety and I think Hannah has anxiety. London has a different kind. Hers is like mine. It's more of a OCD. Yeah. But you were the free-spirited one, yeah. right? You were the, the, the bird that can spread the wings and take on the world and not worry. And then this traumatic event happened and you kind of went into a shell. Now you're starting to climb out of that shell and I'm proud of you for that. Yeah. But you went into a dark shell. Yeah. Right. Bad. You want to talk a little bit about what happened? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So May 29th of this year, I went to, um, a friend's house. I've been friends with for like 10 years, Yeah. you know, grew up that person you know saw me go through all my middle school phases been with my family I mean we were together every day um so it was nice to like go and catch up and hang out and there were some people that I grew up with you know had my mom had taken some of them home from school like I knew these people Mm -hmm. so I go in there and I already had a way home you know London was going to come get me in two hours so I was only supposed to be there two hours um fast forward into the night I wake up in a hospital bed and I remember you holding my hand, mom pacing the room. And my immediate thought was, did I get in a car accident? Like what happened? Like, why am I here? Like never in a million years would I expect what came out of the doctor's mouth. Like I had no idea why I was there. So he had told me, you know, you got drugged with fentanyl and you had an overdose. And I was like, I don't do drugs though. I've never touched drugs. Like I'm so confused what happened that night. So I had gotten some information from Hannah, my sister who was there that night because one of the people at the house had texted her like, Hey, something's seriously wrong with her. And I'd gotten information from a few other people who were there that night. Mm -hmm. So I was laying on the couch apparently like crying and complaining being like something's wrong with me like I don't feel good something's wrong something's wrong and they were all like you just need to go to sleep go to sleep you'll be fine go to sleep and I'm like no something's wrong with me like I I literally I need help so they had given me mac and cheese and I had thrown it all up I couldn't keep anything in my mouth they had given me a water threw that up too at this point my eyes were dilated and I had went unconscious They had carried me outside for some weird reason, I guess, to get fresh air. And right as Hannah's pulling in, I stopped breathing. So I know you and mom were on the phone Mm -hmm. and the cops were on the phone on another phone. Oh, my God. On another phone. So when I had stopped breathing, you and mom were like screaming. Hannah was freaking out. And Hannah was immediately like she had told me I had to. I couldn't complain. I couldn't cry. I couldn't feel anything. I had to fix this. So she was immediately starting to give me CPR. One of the girls that night had been studying to be a nurse. 
so she gave me CPR while Hannah held my head. I'm foaming out of my mouth. They're scraping the, you know, foam out, CPR, scraping, CPR, like, getting me to breathe again. I start breathing again, but my breath was, like, super weird, apparently. Like, it didn't sound normal. The ambulance pulls in. You know, they're figuring out what happened, assessing the situation. I get in the car, and the cops are there. And here's my problem with people in this hometown is that when anything's wrong to everybody, they won't say anything. They never have your back. No one in this town has anybody's back. They would rather be quiet than to get in trouble. They would rather be quiet than to help somebody. So while the cops were there, they lied, they lied, they lied, they hid people, I mean, it was just... And they weren't sure what happened, and so they were scared. So, but on top of that, you know, they're hiding somebody in the house. Yeah. They're, you know, being like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. And so while I'm in the ambulance, the EMS is slapping me in the face. I mean, he's screaming at me. He's shaking me. I won't wake up. up. Like, I will not get up. I know, we met you guys at the hospital. Yeah. So by the time we get to the hospital, they shoot me with Narcan, and that's how they're like... Yeah, they poked your eyeball. Nothing happened. Yeah. So then they shot you with Narcan. They you woke up. me up. So the Narcan shot me up. And mom told me that the first time I woke up, I don't remember the two times I woke up. I only remember the third time. The first time I woke up, I was crying to her saying, you know, it was this person. It was this person. If I die, it was this person. Right. I don't recall that. No, I was there. You um, did that. Yeah. But I don't remember the two times I woke up. I only remember the third time. But, you know, they did blood tests, they did urine tests, they... It all came back positive yeah. with with uh, fentanyl. Fentanyl. Yeah. Like I, and and it, not, not like pills. So, no. so, so people know, we knew nothing about fentanyl. Mm-mm. Like, I'm asking the doctor, what the hell does this mean? What happened? Yeah. You know, you went over there to hang out with a few friends, have a couple drinks, mm-hmm. um, had a ride back, and, you know, we get a call that you're vomiting and foam out of the mouth and we're freaking out. Like, what the hell's going on? It's only like seven thirty, eight o'clock at night. Yeah, like, it was not even what is late. happening? And since Hannah was close, she was on her way over there. And that's when Hannah started freaking out. You stopped breathing. We heard they were giving you CPR. We're screaming and crying on the phone. Mm-hmm. We meet you at the hospital. We talk to the ambulance. He's like, we got her breathing. You know, she's on oxygen. We, she's, a, she's, so, she's still unconscious, but we got her breathing. We're on our way to the ER. And... So we meet them there and that's when you wouldn't wake up and they shot you up and you woke up. So then I'm like, what does all this mean? So the doctor comes over and explains like, look, we're going to do all the blood work and all the pee work and everything we can to see, wait, does she, is she on any prescription pills? Like, no, you know, does she, you know, she do drugs? No, you know, she has a few drinks there. So they go through and they test everything. And what they test for is opioids. Yeah. And if opioids come back naturally in your system, then you've taken some kind of, uh, painkiller or some kind of opioid or, and, and you know, that that's what you've done. That came back negative. Yeah. What came back positive was artificial opioids, AKA fentanyl. fentanyl. Mm-hmm. And that means that you, something was either laced or you took fentanyl or whatever. So the assumption we had based on Kenzie's fear of, and, and what she thought had happened and talking to the kids that day, they were more open to talk than later because they were scared and the parents were a little scared. I mean, as weak as they are, we, we know those guys, they should have been more forthcoming and talking. The parents were scared they would get sued. So of course they were hiding behind that and yeah. we weren't looking to sue anybody. We we're looking for truth. Mm-hmm. And so it's really sad that they're that shallow yeah. and that that shit can happen. So, you know, shout out to those little motherfuckers. But anyways, um, those parents, you know, uh, when, when we were talking, everyone was forthcoming the first day or two and agreed that something happened with, with this person. This person had, you know, prescription pills and probably had some stuff on it, has yeah. messed with this before, made you a drink, didn't purposely do it. I don't think it was intentful. I don't yeah. think you think it was intentful, but accidentally f- you fucking got you fucked up and could have killed you and you actually stopped breathing. And so it became a problem. It's been trauma for you. It's been very yeah. traumatic. And the sad part is, is then all those kids were so scared to get in trouble. And those parents who were friends of ours who were, you know, just don't want to admit anything. They were like, so scared. They completely changed. And, you know, yeah. they were more worried about what was going to happen to them than if you were okay. Yeah. Even the parents. Mm-hmm. And those parents are also some of the posers that I want to live in the point so bad. And then they finally live in the point. They live in the most cheapest part of the point because they're not real ballers. They want to be ballers. Okay. Yeah. And um, that's what's happened. So, unfortunately, and I always wish I run into those fuckers all the time, but I don't. Yeah. Um, 
but unfortunately that's what happened. And you know, when I, when I yelled at this dad that I knew I'm fucking getting in his ass, he's like, you're right. I should care more about this. I'm sorry. Da, da, et cetera, et cetera. But it, it, it's already, it's too yeah, late. Like it's like, too late. Your true colors came out. Yeah. Had somebody been fucked up or something happened at my house, I would have been so concerned if they're okay. I would have been so concerned to get into the bottom of it, regardless if my kid was in on it or not. Yeah. I wouldn't have been hiding and running and scared. And that's unfortunate. The point you made an example, and I don't know if it's just the area we live in, but it's a lot of the world. The world is scared yeah. to stand up for people. The world is scared to have people's back. The world is scared to do what's right because they're so self-induced, so insecure, mm-hmm. so worried about the result, so fearful that they just fucking hide behind things. And it's sad. Loyalty isn't a thing anymore. Loyalty is not a thing anymore. That's I would agree. It's crazy because like, you know, after it had all happened, parents who were there, like, part of the situation with their kids like the kids itself well there were rumors that were bullshit yeah, like, and it was like how are these rumors started these it's the things. same kind of rumors when my company closed yeah. and and the company closed and then the company filed bankruptcy mm-hmm. and i had to lay off 2400 people yeah. there were rumors of i filed bankruptcy and i'm going to prison and all the shit's like where do you guys make up this shit i don't know and now these parents are because their kids were there mm-hmm. they're like well the, no she must have taken something so they come up with their own theory to make themselves feel better about their loser kid who is a fucking loser Right. And the parents obviously seem like a loser. I'm that guy. I call everybody out. I come out with a fucking shotgun. Losers are losers. Winners are winners. You're a loser when you know you're a loser, when you got to hide behind something, when you got to lie about something or you got to put other people down. More than likely, you're a fucking loser. And that's how I feel. And so so some of those parents, the people that I know, dude, it's fucking unfortunate. And they know how I feel like they're like, you know, they don't ever want to run into me. They see me at a gas station. I know I saw one of them at dinner the other night. Mom was saying, you know, so-and-so's here at dinner. I'm like, I didn't see that motherfucker because he didn't want to talk to me because he knows I'd have went to his ass and said, dude, why are you such a bitch and not ask me what happens to how my daughter's doing instead because your kid was there, your kid knows them, you're fucking making up shit. Like, that's the kind of shit that happens. That's why I don't, it's, fucking, I'm telling you, Lake Norman's a bunch of fake wannabes, dude. That's what it is. Yeah, I mean, I think what was so hard for me too is like after experiencing like such a life-changing situation that like, you know, I was very trusting of people. I always had benefit of the doubt towards people like you know until you prove me wrong like I got your back like I'm friends with you I mean I was friends with that person for so long long. and she you know did not treat me the best throughout the years but I still countless of times was like it's fine like we're friends like we've been through so much together but the hardest part was knowing like she was behind some of these crazy rumors that had everybody's well it was her parents house and it was her mm-hmm. covering her own ass because yeah. she didn't want to get in trouble because she hangs out with losers who do loser shit I mean, that's what yeah. it came down to it should have been okay the guy's a loser and he got me in trouble and that's what i told her dad like dude you had a fucking piece of shit at your house who was doing piece of shit things yeah. rather than dealing with that you're more worried about what we're gonna do next mm-hmm. which is sad and pathetic and it's probably because they're too fucking broke they can't afford where they live their house poor so they're scared they're gonna get sued so there's that as well Right. Just yeah. keeping it real. So I think it was just a lot to so, deal with. Kenzie, you know, this it's royally pissed me off that this happened to you. Like, I wish I could fucking strangle the person that did this and hang him from a tree by his fucking toes. Yeah. But I can't. And there's nothing we can do. Yeah. The only thing you can do is heal. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when people hate and people hurt and people turn their back on you and look, me and you can relate to that. It's been a rough year for you and me. Mm-hmm. Been a rough year for everybody. Me and you in particular, based on what people say, it's been a rough year yeah. for the two biggest narcissists. Mm-hmm. Well, and maybe Hannah too, but um, you got to keep your head up. I know. Yeah. You got you got to not let these people bother you, which I think you've done a good job of. Mm-hmm. You can't let them rent space in your head and stay angry. Mm-hmm. Your best recipe for for survival, for winning, for overcoming things, mm-hmm. for suppressing all that negativity is moving on. And looking yeah. forward, and I've been saying lately that the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror. And the more you look in that rearview mirror, you're wasting your fucking time. But the more you look in that windshield of what's next, what's tomorrow, and you think less of them and they take less space, the less you'll be bothered, the more you can start flying again and not being all secured in. And so that would be my advice to you. And I know we talk about it, but it's easier to talk about it on a podcast where you'll listen a little more than in a, in a house where you're like, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it. You're kind of stuck having to hear it right now. Yeah, I think also like... Like for the longest time too is like I was so shut off after it happened that like I disassociated a long time ago. Yeah. 
and so this year has kind of flown by and I feel like it's a lot of losses than wins like there's obviously wins in here and I'm grateful for them but overall I just feel like I had just so much happen in such a short period of time it was just like back to back to back things that I disassociated to the point I you know the saying I've said it you know today like hurt people hurt people I didn't want to hurt people because I was hurting so instead I withdrew myself from so many people and situations because I don't want to hear you out I don't want to sit here and have this conversation of you telling me you know maybe this happened or you know I've had people come back to Bama that I had not seen over summer and you know had a rough start of the beginning of the school year I mean it was just It was hard for me at the beginning. And, you know, I had people come up to me telling me what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing, you know, threatening to pull me out of bed by my hair, telling me that I'm withering away in my bed. Like, this is like, this is not how you should be healing. This is not what you should be doing. And so I just took myself out of so many situations. Well, you were scared. Yeah, because it's like, I don't want to continuously hear people tell me, you need to do this. And you need to do that. You're not doing this good enough. You're not doing this good enough. And it's like, you don't know me though. Like this was something that I experienced. And as a friend or someone in my life, even you shouldn't be telling me what to do. Well, look, even as your dad, I try to get you out of the swamp. Yeah. I'm trying to pull you out and you get mad at me. It's And I'm your dad. I'm like, listen, you go through these battles to get to blessings. You got to have a mindset of of Brutus, the magician here, of a buffalo and run through things. You Mm -hmm. can't just sit in it, right? But it's hard because sometimes what you need is empathy and sympathy. Yeah. Sometimes what you need is, is comforting. Yeah. Like, hey, it's okay. And however you want to process this, that is your choice. I feel like I didn't get that really, too, though. Like... After it all happened, you know, I Well, you went back to school, and then you had all the issues with that. Well, yeah, but before that, I mean, like, it had happened, and, you know, I kind of made it more public, because it was terrifying. Very terrifying. And People don't realize fentanyl, I mean, it's so bad. I didn't even know about it until this happened to you. They just found a truck with, like, enough fentanyl Mm -hmm. to kill 100 million people in fucking Mooresville. Mm Mm-hmm. They just pulled two guys over and fucking pulled the truck out like two days ago. And it's it, yeah. it spikes a fear to you like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's PTSD Everywhere. for you. And I feel like I also, you know, a lot of people had said, you know, she posted this for attention. No. No, I posted it more because mm. I always went about life like, you know, that's never going to happen. You don't me. need any more attention. You got a show coming out. You got all yeah, this shit. Like, this was because you wanted to share the information you went through. Really, right. Like. You don't think it'll ever happen to you till it does. And then you have to sit with it for the rest of your life of being like, oh, my God, I should have been more cautious or, oh, my God, I should have done this. So I made it public knowledge for people to know, like, it's not just some silly thing you hear about on the news every once in a while. Like a one year old just died from it in a daycare because the daycare owners had it under the floorboard like people have it everywhere. And so I think for me, it was. It was so hard because after it happened, you know, everyone believed this rumor or jumped off this rumor or, you know, saying and posting things about me after I was already in such a deep hole that it was like I was basically pleading for anyone to have any sympathy or empathy for me. And I realized that's never going to happen with the people that I had in my life. It was such a wake up call to drop so many people who even if we've been friends for years, you don't benefit me. You secretly hate me. Doesn't it hurt so much to know when things are hard, you find out who's really there and it's yeah, not as run. it's not as many people as you thought. Yeah. Right? Your situation is life and death. Mine was not. Mine was just a lot of money, right? Yeah. An old business mm-hmm. and the brand. And dude, you know, you know, we've talked about this. People I thought were my friends turn their back. Mm-hmm. You know, and they, it, 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 when it's good for them, they're around and they're users. Mm-hmm. And when it's not, and it's sad. And so, what I tell people, and I've been doing a lot more messages on social and trying to share things, is you got to call a friend you haven't talked to in a while. You got to reach out. Yeah. Like, I know you just did that recently. You're playing games with a friend a while, long mm-hmm. time, right? You got to call because you don't know what's going on with people. You got to learn to have empathy and sympathy, which is something I've lacked and I'm trying to have more of. Yeah. You've got to be able to, to um, know who's really in your corner. Mm-hmm. And to know who and what people are. So some of the friends I have right now that stayed around, right? 
and those that have gone, as long as you know who and what people are, you can't be disappointed. Yeah, you can't have expectations. Right. And so it's it, it, my advice is, is learn, and you know this, we share, talk about it, and learn who your friends are and your yeah. circle is. And if you know who and what they really are, like we, you said, you, your expectations will never let you down. Mm -hmm. You won't be surprised. Because yeah. I was really surprised when we closed. And then now I've realized, well, I know what this person is. I know what this person is. And I know what this person is. So if something happens, this person might call me. This person might not. But it's not because they don't care. They got this going on. And this person can give a shit less. So I just need to know these things. Mm -hmm. And then I feel better. You agree? I think that was like the biggest lesson <laughs> that I learned from most of this. Or like at least one of the biggest lessons was like, you know, for me, like I'm a lover. I, if I love you and I care about you, I will go to the ends of the earth for you continuously until you give me a reason not to. I mean, I've always been that way. I've always been, you know, a person that people have in their corner when they're going through something or they need someone to defend them or be loyal to them. I've always tried my hardest to be kind to people until they show me a reason for me not to be. I never go looking for a fight. I've never been that way. And I think after what happened to me, I saw how many people left my life. I mean, I had, you know, on my phone, a whole list of people who stayed in my life. I had to do that to remind myself of, you know, like if these people are going through something or, you know, something happens, where were you for me? And why should I be there for you? I had to constantly remind myself of like, you know, people I thought were my best friends who I did everything together shifted like in a millisecond. And I have to keep reminding myself like these people really weren't my friends. Like they loved what I could give them. If that was money, if that was loyalty, if that was someone to talk to, someone to do something with, that was me. I was never... You know, it was never a two-way street. It was a one-way street, but I was mm. blinded by it because they were nice to me in the moment. So I think I've learned a lot after my accident that I'm trying to apply to my life. I mean, there's days that I'm like, oh, you know, having a bad day yeah. and I don't feel appreciative of life today. I think everybody thinks like, you know, you have a near death experience, you should, you're waking up every day like, oh my God, another day. I'm so happy. It's not like that though. It's, it's not realistic. Wave. Yeah. It's like it's waves. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I'm having a really bad day. Like, I don't want to talk to anybody. You know, you can call me on any of those bad yeah. days because you don't call me enough. You call your mom, you don't call me. Yeah. I think it's just because me and mom really bonded. Jesus. What is so it with you bad. and Hannah? You guys bond with her and not me. But I, I think because, you know, I had slept in your guys' bed twice after it. Like, you know, mom was just like super like paranoid with me. And it kind of felt like, okay, we're both paranoid, extremely paranoid. So it created like this weird bond that we have. And with me and Hannah too, like for the longest mm -hmm. time, me and Hannah couldn't sit in the room without our stomachs hurting because she had seen me that night. And I know she had seen me that night. And it was like, we trauma bonded by yeah. accident. And we didn't know. And so for the longest time, we were just sitting there like, does your stomach hurt? Yeah. Does yours? Yeah. I'm going to go. Okay, bye. Like, we didn't talk yeah. a lot. And then we finally got over it. And now it's, like, nice because when I'm having one of those days of, like, I was searching for answers. I mean, I it was like a need. And you'll never find them. It was a need for me. I'm I like, know. I need to figure out what happened that night. What did I do to deserve this what did I say that made you make, like want to do this to me like what can I do to prevent this from happening again like I don't know what I You'll did never wrong. get those answers yeah and so for the longest time it was a need not a want a need so me and Hannah had talked one night and you know I was having a bad night I was crying we were just like talking and I was just like I don't know what it is but I feel like I'm never gonna heal if I don't have the answers she's like Kenzie you you almost died like you don't need to be living your life for answers. You need to be living your life for you. Windshield, like, rear view oh. mirror. Windshield, yeah. rear view mirror. Well, I'm in therapy now and it's it's going good. That is good. It's definitely a battle because this year, you know, with everything that happened with you and then me and then mom, it's just like everyone has had a lot of just roller coaster feelings. It's been a rough year. This year. Yeah, rough year. So therapy has been like 
a big gigantic open door of just emotions. I need to get a new therapist. I liked my therapist in Michigan. But yeah. Your mom wasn't a fan. I, I was, liked her. She was good for it's me. It's so bad. So I was just like, oh my God, I did not realize how, how bad it's been this year. Like, I think I but, just. But, but we can't off. stay in it though. Yeah, that's right? why we I'm can't, doing therapy. And it's hard. And therapy's great. And mm -hmm. it's hard because trust me, I, just, I get emotional. Like in the shower, I just start thinking how tough it is and how hard it is. And mm -hmm. so much easier to quit. Yeah. But really it's not. It's right. Not it, there, we go through these battles to get to blessings. I truly believe that. Right. Mm -hmm. We we go through these storms to get to where we're supposed to go. We create our own map. It's This is our life and it's not going to be always peachy and rosy. It's going to have mm -hmm. some bad moments. And those moments will make you stronger and different. You're, you're going to have a children you're going to be able to take your experience and coach and educate your children on certain things yeah. like it's a part of you now i know and you're never going to get the answers no you know there's just so like you know i, I could have beat myself with answers of how we close we know the reason but how did we not catch it earlier from generac how do we not all these other things that could have happened what if i'd have done this what like until i could go crazy it's like there's nothing i can do mm -hmm. why is that renting space in my today's life yeah today's life is about tomorrow what am i doing thinking of yesterday I think I'm just excited to get out of this toxic bubble. Yeah. Well, bubble. listen, a couple things. We're going to wrap up. I, what would you tell someone if they aren't very familiar with fentanyl to be safe? Um, I tell my siblings this all the time. I mean, I got on my little sister two days ago. I was so mad at her. Do not take anything from anybody. If you see a random thing on the floor, even if it's a hundred dollar bill, don't pick it up. I don't care what it is. Don't pick it up. Even if you trust and you've been friends with this person for the longest time, don't let them give you anything. You did not see them go and grab and walk all the way to you. Especially drinks and food. Drinks and food, especially like for me, you know, my best friend that I knew forever was part of the situation. Like it doesn't matter who, you know, how much they care about you. If they know you're a family, they're you just gotta be do overly what they careful. Yeah, yeah, like you've got to be careful, and it's everywhere now. I mean, it is everywhere, and just a little sprinkle could kill you. Like a whole mason jar could kill an entire state of it. Like that's how terrifying it is. And I don't think a lot of people realize it doesn't even take a lot to kill you. Yeah, and it's all over. You got to be safe. All over. You know, get things yourself. Wash things off. I mean, all Pay these attention. places, like these states are, they're getting busted for all of these trucks of fentanyl. It's like And people disturbing. are using them to roofie women and yeah. girls. And so you guys use a sippy cup if you go out ever, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a good thing. A sippy cup when you go out. I like yeah, that. Yeah, they have like a little, we use like five-year-old sippy cups and it's so stupid, but like it's easy to use that. Like no one can get in it. Like they can't just, you know, yeah, yeah, no, you can't do that. I have a sippy cup and it's in my hand and I may look like, you know, a moron, but I'm fine with it as long as I'm not getting drugged. All right. Second thing before we wrap up, you're going to have football trauma on January 1st. Huh? You're going to have football trauma. What does that even mean? On January 1st, because your team's going to get blown out of the fucking oh, stadium. football trauma. Football trauma. It's coming. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be in Puerto Rico with your boyfriend. And you're going to have to watch the game of, of my second beloved team and your first beloved team where the Wolverines stomp the Roll Tide. How do you feel about that? You think that's going to that happen? in your dream? Well, I think it's reality. What do you think? No, but did you dream that? No. Are you sure? Yeah, you don't think it's going to happen? I, I believe a lot of people are aiming towards Alabama. Well, the money's going that way. More people yeah. are betting on them. More people believe that we're going to win. So What do you dream, truly believe? I truly believe we're, we have a shot. Have you have shot. a shot or you're going to win? I think we're going to win. Hmm. You know, I'm going to give you so much grief. So am I. I am going to like not let you live this down. Me neither. If you beat Ohio State and we beat the number one team who was above you, buddy, we have a better shot. And then if we beat you, Ohio State fans are going to go crazy. I mean, everybody hates Michigan except Michigan. Everybody. But you love Michigan. I do. I'm a fan of Michigan, but not right now. We're enemies. I put that We're Michigan enemies. flag in the closet. Oh, uh, you had one? I can't. One? I cannot. You have a Michigan flag? Yeah. And a Bama flag? Yeah. And you had them both out mm -hmm. all the time? Mm -hmm. And now you put it away? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to take the one in my backyard and go put it somewhere. You know, your mom's pulling for Bama more. I know. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. Christian's not, though. 
I mean, we have, like, you guys have a good coach, but, I mean, we've got Saban. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, he knows it like the back of his hand. What do you think of my aliens? I think you're just weird. How am I weird? I think you've lost your mind. Am I bipolar? I think you're a lot of things. What, what Name some things that I am. I think you're bipolar. Tell somebody on the podcast something they don't know about me. Go. Uh-oh. See, I'm pretty open. Everybody knows uh, everything. Oh, yeah? Go ahead. Do you really want me to come for you? You right can. Now? You cry like a infant. Really? Yeah. Do Explain. You wanna, do you want to talk about that Go ahead. one time? Yeah. Is that, is that, am I we allowed can do to that. Yeah, absolutely you can. I, this is Unleashed. You can talk about anything you want. This is my want. favorite story of you. Oh my gosh. And so I, oh my God, I get so excited when I can tell this story because I love this story so much. It's so horrible. It is so funny. Mm. I mean, you had to be there to really like laugh and laugh about it, but. It's sad, not funny. It's really funny though in the moment now. Like back then, no. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have laughed at you. And you did, but And I ahead. did because I couldn't contain it. But now you can say it's funny. So we lived in Michigan and we were all debating, like, are we going to move back? Are we not? Are we going to move back? Are we not? And, you know, London, love London, but she always wants to be different. You know, if the whole group's voting, you know, left, she's voting right. Not because she believes in it, but because she wants to be different. And she wants everyone's life to be a little bit harder. I swear. So... We were all debating and London and my dad were like, no, we want to stay here. So at this point, my dad's just agitated. My mom and London are fighting. Hannah and London are fighting. Everyone's arguing at this point. Like me and Christian are kind of sitting it's there. screaming like, match. Yeah. We're like, oh my God. It's bad. You just, <laughs> you got. Well, your mom, <laughs> your mom jumped on London. Yeah. Yeah. You t tell the story. But that's before or that oh. was after. Okay. Before that happened, you sit there and you get up and I vividly remember this because it's just so, it's like engraved in my brain. You get up and you look at us and you just have like, it looks like your head was going to explode. I mean, your face is red. I mean, it's so red. And I'm just looking at him like, what's going to happen? Like, is he going to explode right here? Like, I don't know what's going to happen. All of a sudden, <laughs> you let out this cry and I swear I've never heard anything like it to this day. It sounded like an infant and a dinosaur. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. And you kick the box fan. It's so like, while you're screaming and like scream crying, you're kicking the box fan and it's going everywhere. And I'm sitting there in the corner and I'm laughing. I had to turn away and be like, I can't even stare at you right now because this is so funny. Like, I know you're having like just a tantrum right now, but like that was the weirdest sound that's ever come out of anybody's mouth. Like I can never find that sound again. The day I do, I'm sending it to you. It was so bad. Then all of a sudden, you know, you get mad. You throw a phone at Hannah's baby daddy, almost hit Lily. Then, you know, London and mom start fighting. Hannah and mom start fighting. You and mom start fighting. Everybody's just swinging. And we're all like, oh my God, Hannah and London are literally swinging at each other right now like yeah what is going on i'm pulling them off i'm pulling them off christian runs to his room facetimes grandma i'm like i gotta Rats get us out all of out. yeah like my parents are fighting <laughs> come get me she's like i'm in north carolina i can't come get you yeah i, I walked in there and i'm like christian are you okay he's like yeah he's hiding in the closet it was a bad day it was a bad day but look a lot of families have gone through some stupid shit like that yeah and for the record that was just a normal cry I, I that was, was not I was normal. having an emotional breakdown that I've seen. You know, you the cry. problem is, is I keep everything in, right? I, I try to, I have to navigate. I always tell your mom this. And for, for those listening, when you're on a plane and there's major turbulence and you're scared as the adult, but your kid is more scared and they ask you, so everything going to be okay. What do you say? Yeah, it's going to be okay. When really you're like, oh shit. So you've got to learn to be in control. Le without leadership is chaos. So I was trying to be a good leader and it was fucking chaotic and I couldn't lead and I just imploded. And you know that what? I wish the phone would have hit Alex. That little motherfucker should have taken a hit right in the head from the phone. It but did it hit him. Hit him on the leg. It should have hit him in he the fucking head. He had the biggest bruise I've ever seen. should have hit him in the head. But that was not a normal cry. I've <clears> seen you cry, dad. I always make the joke you're like a teddy bear with teeth. So is Papa Bill. Both of you are the I, the same, like identical. What does that mean, same. a teddy bear with teeth? When you're mad, your teeth come out and you're very, very mean. But usually you're just a teddy bear. You're very emotional. 
People don't realize I'm emotional. Yeah, people think like he's so cold. No, you said the other day, oh, I'm going to be cold from now. I said, you don't even know how to do that. You were like, yeah, you're right, I don't. Like, you're not cold. Mom, cold. As ice. I mean, mom is cold. She's like the ice man. She'll cut you off. I don't care. Like, I can't even tell you how many times mom's ignored me because I pissed her off. And I'm like, mom, but you're my mommy. She's like, I don't care. I'm like, oh my God. Okay. But I'm not like that. No. No. I mean, are you serious? You and Christian got into the biggest fight and I come home or I walk into the playroom. He's on his Xbox. Are you talking about last night? Yeah. Yeah. We gave in a little yeah. bit. You think? Well, listen, he earned it. He told me the uh-huh. way things were going to be. We had a great yeah, conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, let me think about hmm, all the times I've been grounded. I never earned it back. Yeah, you did. A couple no, times. Did. Although I remember when you come down your little Spider-Man thing, you were grounded forever sitting on the damn mm-hmm. staircase. Started my period the next day. But you, you were always grounded. Mm-hmm. Always grounded. He's never been as bad as you guys were. That's He's just bad now. Are you serious? Yes. He swung on you. No, he didn't swing. See that? You weren't even there. Yes, he, I was. I was ne- literally there. By the way, he never swung. He came up and he's like, why you do that? He got in my no, face. No, he tried to get, like, he tried yeah. to hit you. No, he was just angry. Dad, like, Promise. you're his biggest advocate. And honestly, I hope, like, I have someone in my life who's the way I'm you your are biggest advocate, dude. Like, I really, I think you're my, you're my hero. You're the first one to go to college out of all of yeah, us. Yeah, Dad, no, like... Christian, I just, I'm still so shocked about it. Like, I'm so shocked about it. So, we had a talk last night, me, him, and your mom, and your mom talked me into saying, here's some rules. So, he's got rules, and he's got times, but I said, listen, you can go in there and play tonight. We're going to limit it. You're going to have to do more chores. You're going to have to be more involved. We're going to have to see an effort. Because before to yesterday, he was actually doing pretty good. And then yesterday, shit hit the fan. And we took a small thing, and it exploded to a big thing. And just for people out there listening, like, families go through shit. Too bad we didn't have the cameras on that. Holy shit. That would have been great TV. Yeah, I had a panic attack. I know, I'm sorry. Because, like, I just, you know, I come home and I'm You're like, one more time and I'm leaving. Yeah. You're not allowed to leave. Because then you and you guys were fighting at the table at lunch. Well, I was trying to say sorry. He wouldn't even say he loved me. He was mad. You are so alike and such big babies that it drives me nuts. We're all having a fun time. You know, me and Hannah and Nate are talking. You know, I'm playing with Grayson. And all of a sudden, you two are just like babies over there and mom has to mother you both and i'm like this is so embarrassing i mean this is so embarrassing you get embarrassed i never get embarrassed Yeah, because you're like oh well he didn't say i love you back so that's it i'm i'm cold now i'm done and then he's over there like staring holding a knife like i don't know what's going on knife, he's like, hold his knife next to the bread just, it was he's so got a weird. knife next to the bread give me a break like, he's cutting the bread us, he's he just not couldn't. he was cutting the bread he couldn't handle it anymore he was not he was it done. wasn't that bad he was very emotional though i mean he was staring like you would talk to him and he's like and I'm like, oh my God, like both of you are identical. When you don't get your way, you do the same thing and you hate it because he's you and I hate it because he's you. It's like, I can't handle one, let alone two. Like guys, I just got here. That was day one of me being there and all that unfolded. And then you and mom don't think I don't know. You and mom were fighting last night and all of a sudden you guys go fight in public's parking lot. I mean, what was that about? You guys were fighting in the room and then you decided to take it to a new scenery? <laughs> I don't understand. And the shit comes out on Unleashed. That was so weird. We were having a disagreement, an argument. She decided to go get some air. I decided to go meet her at Publix and try to clear it and fix the air. So I met her at Publix. And then you're like, can you go in? And I'm like, well, now they're closed because we sat in the car talking. Because she's like, I just need a break. And so she went, to, she went there and I'm like, well, I'm just going to go meet her there. Talk to her and not let her have her moments to be upset. Oh, well, yeah, I... I I How was the milkshake I got you last it night? It was really good. Wasn't that a dope one? Really you know where good. that came from? No. Cheesecake Factory. Really? How was the cake? It was good too. Which one did you eat more of? What are you talking about? Did you about? eat all of both of them? There was only one. No, did the cake and the and the milkshake, did you finish both? No. That cake was dope though. I've had that cake before. It was good. I wasn't expecting to get a cake. I crushed there. a milkshake. I probably shouldn't have. Your mom gave me shit after. Yeah. It wasn't good. Yeah. All right, Kins, look, um, are you excited about the show? You excited to be out there January nineteenth to our to our uh, preview party? I am. I think it's gonna be fun. Should I keep the brown or go blonde mohawk? I think blonde's like you're just that's who you are. Blonde mohawk, that's it is, dude. Brand. I'm feeling it. Dude, that's the brand. That's what that's I your say. Brand. Going back to the blonde mohawk. Everyone knows platinum. You 
Guy Ferrari. Guy Ferrari. Well, I feel like I'm in better shape than Guy Ferrari. All right, Kens. I love you. I'm proud of what you're doing. I'm excited. Hopefully you stay at Bama. You keep doing your thing. You're crushing it. Your sister just got accepted to the University of Arizona. What do you See think about where that? she ends up too. This could be she. She wanted to go to LSU just so you two could go to football games and argue. Yeah, you know who gave her that idea? Me. I told her not I to go. To, I told her. her not going to LSU because that's just a bad area to live. Yeah. Baton Rouge is too much voodoo. <sighs> just bad. She's into that though. She didn't. After we told her, she's like, I ain't going there. So we'll see. I think she's going to end up somewhere like, and you heard it here first: Oklahoma, oh, uh, Texas, Arizona. She's going to end up one of those middle states. You heard it here first. I think IU. Iowa? Indiana. No, I think she goes, I, she didn't apply for Indiana. She's still applying. I helped do them. She's like 20. She, it's not one of them. We did just apply to USC though. Why? Cali. She just, she, she gets in. Shits and giggles. I'm not going to go to Cali. Lana has a better chance of going to Boulder than Cali. She does have the one in Boulder. Yeah, I gave That's a decent one. Too. All right. Thank you, Kins, for coming on. I love you, girl. Oh. Anything you want to say to people? Your dad's the shit. Um. Mm. Anything you want to get off your chest? I don't think so. Just praying that people love the show. That's what they're talking about. And you know what? And pray that they help elevate and be nice to people. Tell them to be kind yeah. to people. I mean, don't be a fucking dickhead. You, Nobody likes a dickhead. You get what you project and you oh. project negativity. You're going to get negativity in your life. And I mean, truth always comes out eventually. So. It's well said. I like your blue Nikes. Thank you. Bam! That's a wrap on Unleashed.